In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you were starting from scratch, what would you say? I believe in what? I'm trying to preach my way through the Eucharist this year rather than preaching through the Bible readings in Lent, and we've got to the Creed. That's the thing I'm going to talk about today. So, I believe in what? Those who say we believe in one God have pretty much never been able to let it rest at that. For one reason or another, there seems to have been a need to say something more, to say something very clear about what it is that we believe about God by means of saying something about who we are. If you were listening carefully to the Bible readings last week, you would have heard a bit of Deuteronomy that people think may once have been used like a creed, maybe the earliest one we've got. It was the bit that began, my father father was a wandering Aramean. And for us, it reads like something between a creed and an offertory prayer. The author tells people to approach the altar of the Lord with an offering and then recite, my father was a wandering Aramean and then repeats the story of the Israelites being rescued from Egypt, being established in a land of bounty, and sharing the bounty of that land with the aliens who lived among them. That was their creed. It was the statement of who they were, where they'd come from, and what they believed about themselves. Another obvious statement of belief is the hymn to Christ in Philippians, that bit of where it speaks of Christ emptying Himself on the cross and then says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend in earth and in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Just like a creed, you can imagine people saying it again and again and again to emphasize who they were and what they believed. We have echoes of those words in hymns that we still sing. And creeds are sometimes sung. That was something that Cedric Blakey always tried to nudge me into when he was working here as the vice provost. He said, creeds are much better sung. And perhaps it is easier to make a collective assertion of what we believe when we sing. One of the things that John Bell has been teaching churches around the world for years, I think he's in Canada doing it today, is that people believe what they sing, for good and for bad. That can be quite alarming when you look at the words of actual hymns. But people do believe what they sing. We use two creeds in the common life of our church. The Nicene Creed, which is what we use at our Eucharists, and the Apostles' Creed, which is simpler and used as a teaching creed at baptisms. And then there's the Athanasian Creed. For those who want to look for something more, you can find that in the Scottish Prayer Book. And some people will remember reciting or singing that on Trinity Sunday when the prayer book was in common use. For now, though, I'm talking about the Nicene Creed, which we are about to say together. We believe in one God. Today we recite the Creed perhaps forgetting what a battleground it once was. It took quite a struggle for the church to get to the formula that we use. The battle was over whether Jesus was God or whether Jesus was like God. That's one of the big battles that goes into the words. Big implications theologically in knowing one way or the other. We say we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one substance with the Father. There was the rub, of one substance. Is that what the church believes? That was resolved at the Council of Nicaea in the year 325. And it was a battle between two church parties as to who would win out. One of the great defenders of the faith at that meeting was St. Nicholas, whom we know better as Father Christmas. He was completely opposed to someone called Arius. Arius Arius claimed that Jesus 
was merely like God, but not of essence the same. Famously, things turned rather ugly at that meeting, with St. Nicholas using his fists to sort things out, punching Arius on the nose and getting locked up overnight for letting his anger take over. He lost his temper, but Arius lost the argument. There happens to have been a synod here in this church in the last 24 hours, which a good many people are commenting on. It is perhaps worth remembering that the bar by which you measure a success in a church council or synod is remarkably low if we take the Council of Nicaea as the benchmark. (laughs) So long as it is finished without people trying to settle the matter with their fists, it probably can be counted as a success. On the other hand, having a boxing ring and giving the candidates boxing gloves would be slightly less brutal than the process of selecting a bishop in the Scottish Episcopal Church. I happen to think. But back to the plot. Back to the creed. Christians believe that Jesus is fully human and fully divine. You can still find echoes of what Arius taught amongst the Jehovah's Witnesses, but not amongst Orthodox Christians. That's those of us who say the creed. And all the stuff that led up to that punch-up led up to what we still recite every week. And that's just one of the battles of the creed. The other obvious one is pertinent to us, the great controversy of the filioque clause, the question of whether the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son, as most of the Western Church claims, or whether the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father, as most of the Eastern Church and the Scottish Episcopal Church in its modern liturgies proclaims. If you want more about that, then speak to our celebrant today, John Riches, who was instrumental in getting us to revert, for ecumenical reasons, to the text of the undivided church. And that's a really interesting debate to get into, but not right now. What use is a creed, though? Rather obviously, it says what we believe. But it is also rather useful in not having too much in it. Christians have always tended to get excited, rather overexcited, about their own particular interpretation of the faith. And I learned a lot from Bishop Greger about this. When people used to ask him tricky theological questions, he used to give a shrug, and he would say, well, is it in the creed? Do you believe that the devil is real? Well, is it in the creed? Do you believe that Christians should all be able to speak in tongues? Well, is it in the creed? Do you believe that only Christians who could testify to Jesus Christ being their Lord and Savior will enter heaven? Well, is it in the creed? Do you believe that all homosexuals are going to hell? Well, is it in the creed? What we believe in the creed is short and simple and doesn't include a whole load of stuff that lots of people try and add in as essential. The creed is a defense against people forcing us all to believe the same thing as much as it is an opportunity for us all to proclaim what we do all affirm. It is worth spending time with the creed. It is a basic part of how we define who we are. It is worth knowing what's in it, and it's worth trying to understand how people have meant it through the centuries. It's worth knowing where it came from, And it is worth thinking about what's not in it, which might be just as much a gift. Within our faith, it isn't the case that anything goes and you can believe what you like. We are people who believe stuff. And this is the common stuff that we all in the Scottish Episcopal Church and in the Orthodox churches since the Council of Nicaea have believed and proclaimed. We believe in the God who made us. 
the Son who redeems us, and the Holy Spirit who sets us free and inspires us. That's what I believe. How about you? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one substance with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life 